So Graham's been studying some of the um, insects that are found at NEP using these traps. These are called interception traps. Uh, he's got these all over the site and he's been looking at what beetles and other insects he can find in them. We just thought they are in the process of taking this one down. So Graham, can you talk us through how these work then? Yeah, I'm just cutting that off there. So we, um, these four veins here, if you've ever seen a, a, a moth trap, it's a bit like the top of a moth trap. Um, these four perspex veins, any insect flying into them is going to bounce off and the majority of them will fall into the funnel. There's a bit of um, mesh in the top of there to stop bats going in because that has happened historically. Not with me, but I've heard about it. Um, and then at the bottom here, there's a killing jar with a collecting fluid in which I've just took away. Um, and that's where the invertebrates go. You, I tend to use a non-toxic antifreeze because that's um, it's a really good sort of uh, safe way of doing it. Uh, sort of like propylene glycol. Um, key thing is, is you need to come and change them every two weeks. Okay. So from, from May the 12th, uh, I've been changing them at least every two weeks. And this okay. is the last, the last session. So. so they'll be here from May until September? Yeah, yeah. Because the key thing with a lot of these insects that are associated with dead and decaying wood is that if you're not using traps like this, you will never find them. Um, you know, they might be only around as adults for a week, sometimes less, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And so you can leave these up in place for months and then you're going to find, you're going to get a good representation of what things are found here. So a superb way of like sampling the, the saprozoic insects in a certain place. One of the things that's been really good as well is coming and collecting these every two weeks is I found quite a lot of good stuff just, just taking the traps down. So this tree particularly has been, has been a really good one, back in May and June particularly. As, as you're sort of sorting the trap out, you look down and there's rhinoceros beetles crawling over here. Oh, there's brilliant. ant beetles. I mean, you can see the, the, all this, all this frass here is from Platypus cylindricus, the oak pinhole borer, which has been, uh, as the summer has progressed, this trunk has just become like, Covered in plastered them, yeah. and sawdust. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a tiny bit on this, on this limb in, back in May. Um, and I mean, it's, it's rare to find a tree in the perfect state of decay uh, like this one is. I mean, it's, it's very recently come down. It's very, you know, it's still got a lot of the bark on, um, but it's just, this is just the perfect feast for so many different invertebrates. So this, this tree particularly, that trap particularly has been, been really, really productive. Yeah, because it's, it's quite unusual to see this sort of thing where you can see all this obvious activity, you know, on these trees. Often there'll be a lot of things under the bark, but to see all this frass and all this wood dust everywhere, that's quite unusual. So obviously this tree is in a superb location, isn't it, I think? Yeah, brilliant. For all sorts of different things. And actually one of the best days we had doing the surveys, we had a, a nighttime session in early June on a really warm night. Um, and, and we came around looking, looking, torching on the tree trunks and, uh, and found loads of, th loads of really nice saprozoites, like things like a, a, that smart clarid I've shown you, yeah, Pilo yeah, mollis, yeah. Um, and loads and loads of uh, longhorn beetles that, that you don't normally see so, so yeah, often yeah, yeah, in the yeah, daytime. Yeah. Um, and and pred pred a lot more predatory things like the, uh, the ant beetles, which were, um, were quite numerous, and Chalidium elongatum, which is nationally scarce, uh -huh. which, which predates this thing, yeah. So, yeah, because yeah. yeah, it's, it's important to point out, you know, th these things that we can see the evidence of here now, you know, these have all their own predators and parasitoids, don't they? Yeah. 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 Um, so this is just one species, but then you know, there's a whole network of the species associated with just this one. Yeah. 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 And, um, and if, if you only eat, uh, if you only eat invertebrates that are saprozoic, then you, you in turn are also considered to be saprozoic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even so, though you're not there for the wood or the fungi. Yeah, there, yeah. What, what else is there? Yeah, um, but it's an you know it's an easy habitat to overlook, isn't it? You know, you might think you know something like this looks a bit oh well, let's get rid of that. Well, you look how many idioms there are for, for that involve dead wood, like clearing out dead yeah, wood. Yeah. I mean, it is it is by definition something that we've come to see as of having no value other than for firewood. Where yeah. actually the best thing people can do is if they really want to help our woodlands is take a bit of live healthy wood for the fire <laughs> and leave the dead yeah, wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think times are changing a little bit, aren't they? I think people are starting to recognise the importance of this sort of habitat. Um, historically, you know, this sort of habitat was seen to be, you know, pretty pointless, wasn't it? You know, people would just get rid of dead wood, you know, burn it or whatever else. But I think times are maybe changing a little bit, aren't they, I think? Definite, definitely um, in some places. Like, so, so here at NEP, you know, there, there's, 
10 or 20 years ago, I imagine if this tree, this big tree came down over a path before the project started, the path it would have been at least cleared up, yeah, yeah. at least a, the, the, the pathway cut through it. I mean, a big tree like this is such a vital habitat for so many things and it will keep, this will keep being an important habitat for decades to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, 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 the best thing you can do is leave it and, and, yeah. and move the path if you can and move the track. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's something that is clearly, um, uh, is changing here, but, but still in the wider landscape, um, it's it's a big problem, yeah. um, and I've been involved in surveys where one part of an estate's paying you to do a survey on dead wood, and another part's <laughs> chopping up the dead wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so it, it's it's amazing how much it, it, it's still it, yeah. it is still a problem. Yeah. yeah.